From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman coming to you from our Boston area studio and this is a special Cube Conversation. We we'll always love talking to startups around the industry, understanding how they're creating innovation, uh, doing new things out there and Oftentimes, uh, you know, one of the exits for those companies is they do get acquired. And happy to welcome back to the program one of our CUBE alumni, Shang Liang. He is the co-founder and CEO of Rancher. Uh, today, there was an announcement for a definitive acquisition of SUSE, who our, our audience will know well. We were at SUSECon. So, Shang, first of all, thank you for joining us, and congratulations to you and the team on, uh, you know, joining SUSE here in the near future. Thank you, Stu. I'm glad to be here. All right, so, so Sheng, why don't you give, give our audience a little bit of context. So, you know, I, I, I've known Rancher since, you know, the very early days. Uh, you know, I, I knew Rancher before, you know, most people had heard the word Kubernetes. Uh, it was about containerization. It was about helping customers. Uh, you know, it was that cattles versus pets. So, you know, that yes. Rancher analogy was, you know, hey, we're going to be your rancher and help you deal uh, with with that sprawl and all of those pieces out there um, where you don't want to, you know, know them by name and the like. So, help us understand, you know, you know how what was announced today um, is meeting along the journey that you set out for with Rancher. Absolutely. So, uh, Sousa is the largest uh, independent open source software company in the world, and they're a leader in enterprise Linux. Uh, so today they announced they've, uh, they have signed a, a definitive, definitive agreement to acquire Rancher. So uh, we started Rancher about six years ago, uh, as Stu said, to really build the next generation enterprise compute platform. Uh, and in the beginning, we thought uh, uh, we're going to just based on uh, our technology based on Docker containers. But pretty soon, uh, Kubernetes was just uh, clearly becoming an industry standard. So Rancher actually became uh, the most widely used uh, enterprise uh, Kubernetes platform. So really with the uh, combination of Rancher and SUSE going forward, we're going to be able to uh, supply the uh, uh, you know, enterprise container platform of choice uh, for lots and lots of customers out there. Yeah, just for our audience that might not be as familiar uh, with Rancher, uh, why don't you give us you know, your positioning of where we are with the Kubernetes landscape. Uh, as they've talked about many times in theCUBE, a few years ago it was all about, you know, hey, are we going to have some distribution war? Um, That's right. you know, Rancher has a, an option in that space, but today it's multi-cloud. You know, Rancher works with you know, all of the cloud Kubernetes versions. So you know, what is it that Rancher does uh, uniquely and, you know, of course, as you mentioned, you know, open source is a, is a key piece of what you're doing. Exactly. Uh, uh, Stu, thanks for the question. Um, so this is a really a good lead up into describing what Rancher does and, and some of the industry dynamics and the great opportunity we see with SUSE. Uh, so uh, many of you, I'm sure, have heard about Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is this uh, container orchestration platform that basically uh, uh, works everywhere. And it, you, know, you can deploy all kinds of applications and run these applications through Kubernetes. It doesn't really matter fundamentally uh, uh, what infrastructure you use anymore. So the great thing about Kubernetes is whether you, uh, you know, deploy your apps on AWS or on, on Azure or on on-premise bare metal or vSphere clusters or out there you know, in IoT gateways and 5G base stations and surveillance cameras, literally everywhere, Kubernetes will run. So it's, it's, uh, I like to, in, in our world, I like to think about Kubernetes as the standard for compute. You know, if you kind of make the analogy, what's the standard of networking? That's TCP IP. So you know, networking used to be very different. You, know, you used to, in the, in the, in the decades ago, there used to be different kinds of networking and, and at best you had like a local area network uh, for a small number of computers to talk to each other. But today with TCP IP as a standard, we have internet, right? We have Cisco, we have Google, we have Amazon. So I, I really think as successful as cloud computing has been uh, and how, how much impact it has had 
to actually push you know, digital transformation and app modernization forward, a lot of organizations are kind of stuck between you know, their desire to take advantage of a cloud provider, one specific cloud provider, all and bells and whistles versus uh, any cloud provider just doesn't, uh, not a single cloud provider can actually supply uh, infrastructure for everything that a, that a large enterprise would need. You know, you, you, you may be in a, or in a country, you may be on the, uh, in some remote locations, you might be in, in your own private data center. So, so, so the market really, really uh, demands a, a, a standard form of compute inf uh, uh, infrastructure. And that turned out to be Kubernetes. That is the true, you know, Kubernetes started as sort of a way Google internally ran their containers, but, but what it really hit the stride was uh, a couple of years ago, people started to realize, you know, for once, uh, compute could be standardized. And that's where Rancher came in. Rancher is a Kubernetes management platform. We help organizations tie together all of their Kubernetes clusters, regardless where they are. And you can see this is a very natural uh, evolution of organizations who embark on this Kubernetes journey. And, and by definition, Rancher has to be open because who, this is such a strategic piece of software, who would want you know, they're sort of their single point of control for all compute to be actually closed and proprietary. Rancher is 100% open source. And not only that, Rancher works with everyone. It really doesn't matter who implements Kubernetes for you. I mean, Rancher could implement Kubernetes for you. We have, we have a Kubernetes distro as well. We actually have a, we're particularly well known for Kubernetes distro designed for uh, uh, resource constrained deployments on the edge called K3S. Uh, some of you have, might have heard about it, but really we don't care. I mean, we work with uh, upstream Kubernetes distro, any CNCF compliant Kubernetes distro, or one of many, many popular, uh, all the popular uh, uh, cloud hosted Kubernetes services like EKS, GKE, AKS, and, and with Rancher. Uh, enterprise can start to treat all of these Kubernetes clusters as, as fungible resources, as catalysts. So that, that, that is basically our vision. And they can focus on modernizing their application, running their application reliably. And, and, and that's, that's really what Rancher is about. Okay, so, so Sheng, uh, you know, being acquired by SUSE, I'd love to hear a little bit, you know, what does this mean for the product? What does it mean for your customers? What does it mean for, for you personally? According to Crunchbase, uh, you, you'd raised uh, $95 million, as you said, over, over the six years. Uh, it's reported by CNBC that the acquisition's in, you know, the ballpark of 600 to 700 million. So that would be about a 6X, uh, you know, increment over what was invested. Not sure if you can comment on the finances and, uh, you know, would, would love to hear what, what this means going forward uh, for, for, for Rancher and its ecosystem. Yeah, actually, the, 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 uh, I know there's tons of rumors going around, but the acquisition price, uh, Sousa has decided not to disclose the acquisition price. So I, I, I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, Rancher has been a very uh, cash efficient business. I mean, there's been no shortage of funding, but even amongst the uh, $95 million we raised, we really haven't spent majority of it. We probably spent, you know, uh, just about a third of the money we raised. In fact, our, Last round of fundraise was, uh, was just three, four months ago. It was a $40 million uh, Series D, and we didn't even need that. I mean, we could have uh, just continued with the Series C money that we raised a couple of years ago, which we barely started spending either. So uh, uh, the, the, the great thing uh, about uh, Rancher's business is because we're such a product-driven company, you know, with, with open source software, you develop a unique product that actually uh, solves a real problem. And then there's just no barrier to adoption. So this stuff just spreads organically, people download and install, and then they put it in mission critical production. Then they seek us out for commercial, uh, for commercial subscription. And the main value they're, they're, they're getting out of a commercial subscription is, is really the confidence that they can actually rely on the software uh, to power their mission critical workload. So, so once they, you know, once they 
really start using Rancher. They recognize the uh, Rancher as an as a, as, a, as an organization provide. So uh, it's it, this 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 business model has worked out really well for us. Vast majority of our inbound leads, uh, uh, vast majority of our deals are based on inbound leads, and uh, and and that's why we've been uh, so efficient. And that's I think one of the things that really attracted Sousa as well. Uh, you know, it's just these days you you don't just want a business that you have to do heavy weight, uh, heavy duty, you know, old fashioned enterprise selling because that's really expensive. And 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 when so much of the of that uh, uh, value is kind of built into some kind of a bundling or locking, sooner or later customers know better, right? And they want to get away. So we we really wanted to provide a uh, open source and open more important than open source is actually open a lot of people don't realize there are actually lots of open source software even in the market that are not really quite open that might seem like a contradiction but you can have open source software which you eventually package it in a way like you don't even make the source code available easily you don't make it easy to rebuild you know the stuff so rancher is truly uh, open and open source people just uh, download open source software run it and the day they need it our enterprise subscription we will support it they don't the day they don't need it they'll actually continue to run their 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 their, their, their that the same piece of software and we'd be you know we'd be happy to continue to provide them with 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 patches and security fixes so it's a it's we as an organization we really have to provide that continuous value and it's it worked out really well because uh, this is such a important piece of software. SUSE has this model that, 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 that I saw you know, on their website that kind of really appeals to us. It's called the power of many. So SUSE, it turns out they not only you know, completely understand and buy into our commitment to open and open source, but they're, uh, they're, they're completely open in terms of supporting the whole ecosystem, the, the software stack that not only they produce, but their partners produce. In many cases, even their competitors produce. So that re that, that 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 kind of mentality really resonated with us. Yeah. So so, so Shang, you you wrote in in the article uh, announcing the acquisition that when the deal closes, uh, you'll be running uh, engineering and innovation uh, inside of SUSE. Uh, if I remember right, uh, Thomas DiGiacomo has a similar title to that right now in in SUSE. Of course, M Melissa Di Donato is the CEO of SUSE. Um, of course, the the uh, the comparison that everyone will have is you are now the open shift to SUSE. Uh, you, you're no stranger to OpenShift. You know, Rancher competes against uh, Red Hat OpenShift out in the market. I, I, I wonder if you could share a little bit. You know, what do you see in your customer base uh, for, for people out there that says, you know, hey, how should I think of you know Rancher compared to what, what, what Red Hat's been doing with OpenShift? Yeah, I mean, I think Red Hat did a lot of good things for the for open source, uh, for Linux, for Kubernetes, and for the community. You know, the, the OpenShift being primarily in a uh, Kubernetes distro. And on top of that, Red Hat built, uh, uh, you know, a number of enhanced capabilities. But uh, at, at the end of the day, we don't believe OpenShift by itself actually solves uh, the kind of problem we're seeing with customers today. And that's why, uh, uh, you know, as much investment has gone into OpenShift, we just see no slowdown. In fact, an acceleration of demand of Rancher. So we don't, um, uh, um, I mean, Rancher always thrived by being different. And, and, and the, the, the nice thing about SUSE being an independent company, as opposed to a, uh, you know, a, a part of a much larger organization like Red Hat is where we're going to be as an organization, a hundred percent focused on bringing the best experience to customers and solve customers, uh, business problems as they transform their legacy application suite into cloud native uh, 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 infrastructure. So uh, I think um, uh, you know the opportunity is so large. There's going to be uh, 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 there's just going to be enough uh, market there for multiple players. But we uh, you know we we measure ourselves our success uh, by how how many people how how much adoption we're actually getting. Uh, out of our software. And I, I said in the beginning, Rancher is the most widely used 
enterprise Kubernetes platform. And out of that, you know, what real value we're delivering to our customers. And I think we solve those problems, we'd be able to build a fantastic business with SUSE. Excellent. Uh, Sheng, uh, I'm wondering if we could just look back a little bit. Uh, you, you're no stranger to acquisitions. Uh, remember back when cloud.com was acquired by Citrix, uh, you know, back when we had the stack wars between the cloud stack and open stack and the like. I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, what lessons you learned having gone through that, uh, that, that you took away and prepared you for what you're doing here uh, and how you might do things a little bit differently uh, with, with, with the SUSE acquisition. Yeah, my experience uh, with cloud.com acquired by Citrix was very good. I mean, in fact, I, um, uh, and, and a lot of times, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, you really got to uh, uh, figure out a way to, to uh, adapt, uh, to actually make sure that Rancher is a st standalone business or back then, you know, cloud.com is a, as it was a standalone business, how are they actually fit into uh, 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 the acquires business as a whole? So, so when cloud.com was acquired, it was pretty clear as attractive as the cloud stack business was, really the bigger price for Citrix was to actually modernize and cloudify their desktop uh, 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 business, which, you know, they're the absolute leader. It was like a $2 billion business growing to $3 billion back then. I think it's even bigger now with now everyone working remote. So, so we, 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 so we not, at Citrix, we not only continue to grow uh, uh, the cloud stack business, but more importantly, one of the things I'm the most proud of is we really played a, a crucial role in modernizing and cloudifying uh, the uh, you know, the, the, the Citrix mainline business. So, so this time around, I think the alignment between what Rancher does and what SUSE does is, is, is even more apparent. Obviously, you know, until the deal actually closes, we're not really allowed to actually uh, uh, plan or execute on, 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 on some of the integration synergies. But at a high level, right, you know, the, the, uh, the, I don't see any really uh, difficulty for uh, for SUSE to be able to effectively uh, market and uh, service uh, their global base of customers uh, using the Rancher technology. So it's just uh, you know just the, the synergy between uh, Kubernetes and uh, uh, and Linux is just so much stronger. And in some sense, I, you know, I some I, I think I've used this term before. Linux is like uh, you know, it's, 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 Kubernetes is almost like the new Linux. So so it's just seems like a very natural place for uh, such for 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 uh, SUSE to evolve into anyway. So I'm I'm very very bullish about the 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 the, the potential synergy uh, with the acquisition. I just can't wait to roll up my hands and get going as soon as the deal closes. All right. Well, Shang, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, absolutely, from our standpoint, we look at it. It's it's a natural fit of what Rancher does into SUSE, as 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 you stated. You know, the open source vision, uh, the the community and customer focus, uh, absolutely aligned. So, best of luck with the integration. Uh, looking forward to seeing you when you have your new role and uh, hearing more about Rancher's journey. Now, part of SUSE. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Stu. It's always great talking to you. All right, and be sure we'll, we'll definitely catch up with Rancher's team uh, at the KubeCon Cloud Native Con uh, European show, which is of course virtual, as well as many other events down the road. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.